I tell people read the read the title, The Prodigal Pilot, because I I equate that to uh, the prodigal son. Now I know prodigal means extreme waste, and of course, if I look at it, I, I wasted my my uh, credibility in my life on some of the the things that I did, and I explain that in the book. But um, uh, in order, to, well, the reason I wrote the book was I know there's men in their 40s, 50s that are going through a midlife crisis that may be doing uh, similar things, making poor choices that cost them their family and so on, and I want them to see themselves. And I really sincerely feel that God used my first wife's health, which it took something that severe to bring us home. And he put her in heaven, and I, I don't have any regrets there necessarily. I mean, it would have been nice to grow old together, but uh, because of the circumstances, uh, it, uh, you know, um, life on earth is not the ultimate goal of our existence. Mm -hmm. So she just got there a little earlier than I did. Yes. And uh, right now, I am really feel fulfilled. I mean, I'm 82 years old. I am healthier than I've been. I've got a lot of energy. I'm a chaplain, a volunteer chaplain in the Allen County Jail. We formed a faith-based mentoring ministry to men uh, men mentor uh, these chaps when they get out to help them change their life. I feel far more gratification from doing that than flying 450 people in a 747 and think I'm God when I'm up there until I get on the ground, take off my bars, and I'm just one of them. So I'm nobody important then. So I understand that uh, that was uh, somewhat of a phony existence, but it's interesting now that I wrote the book, people uh, think I'm a great guy because I'm a published author, you might say. But I'm the same guy that's always been here in, Wood in Woodburn and Fort Wayne, just humbly doing what God asked us to do. And I don't know if I could have done that without uh, the severity of the situation where he used her health. Because I had some health problems, psychoma psychosomatic illnesses and things in the 40s, when I was in my 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. But that's all. I'm, so the Lord used Ruth's health and also some other things. And, and I think this is a good time to say that we go back uh, 20 years right. because I moved into Three Rivers apartment and I didn't know whether I should have moved into that apartment or another one I was considering. And the next morning I woke up and on my doorknob was some freshly baked bread <laughs> in a plastic bag with the Bible verse that man cannot live by bread alone. And I thought, I'm supposed to be here. And then I found out it was you who put it there and I met you and Ruth, and I had the privilege of meeting you, and I've also met you and Sharon. And there's one more thing that we are connected because as we talked, how many people in Fort Wayne, Indiana have worked for Howard Hughes? Well, you were his chief pilot for his, uh, for his um, fleet. I worked as a flight attendant for Hughes Air West Airlines. So we both, in effect, had Howard Hughes as our boss. And in fact, when we talked, we knew some people in common. So I thought, what, uh, what a coincidence. And I never saw him either. And when you said he didn't fly his own airplanes, that would be the reason why, I guess. Yes. <laughs> that was, was very interesting information for me. What is the response you've had from this book? I've had Air Force uh, pilots that, that uh, emailed me and said, Bob, that I, a page turner, I couldn't put it down. You said what I wanted to say all my life. And uh, mostly it's very positive. 